Hey guys, Mrs. C here with Tutor Ideas for Cycle 1, Week 4 of Foundations. I um, hope you guys had a great weekend and are looking forward to a good week. So, let's get into Week 4. We start off with Geography like I usually do. Um, this week was slightly easier because we only had four locations. Um, and, at least for me, since I have littles, the less locations we have to find, the better. Um, we used... I just had them. My little dinosaurs. Oh, I stuck them back in my bag. Huh. Uh, we use my little dinosaurs. Um, they're just little finger puppets. So you, if you have finger puppets, that's awesome. If not, um, you could even um, let the kids draw a little smiley face on their finger or get a smiley face sticker and stick it on the ends of their fingers if you don't have finger puppets. You don't have to go really spend a lot of money. But I just happen to have these for my own kids and have stolen them to use. So, um, they're just these little dinosaurs that, I don't know, little plastic can go on the tips. So, we went over it first. I showed it to them. They pointed to it. Um, for, like, Hattusa, I, you know, talked about, like, Hattusa, the hat's on top of your head. It's up towards the top of, um, up in Asia Minor, which we're learning, so it was up towards the top. Um, so Hattusa, and then I had them run their finger back and forth over where Asia Minor is, just really rub on Asia Minor. Then we went down to the Arabian Desert, and I had them rub, but then to be careful because it's really hot in the desert, they don't want to burn their fingers. So we rubbed over it and then would jerk our finger up. And then we would um, just tap real lightly on Cyprus. Uh, so then we put our dinosaurs on, and I had them show their dinosaurs where all the things were. So... Um, we had them, uh, just kind of touch Hattusa with the little tips of the dinosaurs. So we touched Hattusa. And then I had them, um, give Asia Minor, like, kisses all the way across, which that's just going like this. So they just did this all the way back and forth across Asia Minor. And then I said their dinosaurs are ready for the desert because all the dinos that I have have sunglasses on. So they went down to the desert and walked around. But I said to be careful, um, that they don't burn their feet because it's hot in the desert. And then we um, went to Cyprus and just touched our nose to Cyprus. And I just, with Cyprus, I really emphasized the Cyprus part of it. So, um, yeah, that's what we did for geography. Just went over that a few times. Like I said, it was pretty easy today with only four locations. Um, for math, I had post-it notes uh, with the skip counting up on the wall. Um, I did have the equations written out on my board, but we didn't really work off the board today. Um, but I had them, the skip counting written out on post-its and put both of them up over on a spot on my wall. And we um, all came and sat in front of it on the floor. And then I have one of those, the plastic pointers with like the little pointy hand at the end. And I just used that and pointed to each of them. Um, I really liked doing that, just having the numbers bigger and being able to point their own individual things. I think it really helped kids follow along with the numbers. Most of them know their numbers really well, but when we're doing it up on the board, it's kind of, I think it's harder for them to follow along right now. So that worked really well. Um, for the sevens, I we just sang through it once, then I let the kids come up and take a turn. There's, I've got six kids, so that gave me my seven times for the sevens. And then for the eights, we went through it, and I went through it once, and then I would let them pick a couple numbers to remove um, of the post-it notes, and then we'd see if we could remember the numbers, and then the next kid would pick a couple, and so on and so forth. So anyway, that was what we did for math. Um, for Latin, I used my voice. They're my new cards that I made, but I pulled out the ones that were more action cards I guess I should say um which those are not actually not the action cards um I, yeah I just pulled out the ones that worked a little better since the um Latin this week already has a tune to it I didn't want to try to also do a voice while we were singing the tune so I pulled out the cards that were like jumping jacks volcano um clapping on the syllable I'm trying to remember the rest of them. A uh, hula dance, um, doing a sports action. So the one who had that card, they picked um, baseball bat. So we just pretended we were hitting a baseball with a bat the whole time. And we just chanted, saying, I guess it's a song. We just kind of chanted and sang through the declensions while we were doing whatever their card said. So if it was clapping on syllable, we're just saying, ah, a, a. Wow. <laughs> Ah, 
A A M A, and we just clapped on the syllable. If we were doing jumping jacks, we were just jumping jacks while we did it. Um, their favorite by far, if you don't have this and you've got the littles, um, is the volcano, which is where you start quiet and then you get really loud. That they ask to do that for everything, basically. So that's what we did for Latin. For science, I just invented my own little song, and we did it. We did it in Ring Around the Rosy style, but it was to the tune of London Bridge, and we just all fell down at the end. So I know that that might be like really wrong of me to do those together. We should probably have just done one or the other, but <laughs> I just it worked better that way. So we all held hands on a circle, and we sang through the science, and then we fell down at the end on Golgi Body. So my song was. Nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuole, mitochondria, cell membrane, cell wall, chloroplast, Golgi bodies, and then we had all fall down. So I'll sing that one more time for you. Nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuole, mitochondria, cell membrane, cell wall, chloroplast, Golgi bodies. So that's what we did for science. Like I said, we just went around in a circle, we went a couple times one way, then we went the other way, then we whispered it, and we sang it loud, and then um, they wanted to do volcano. So we did the volcano, started quiet and went loud. Um, for English, we've got more prepositions. I think you should be able to see what I'm doing. Maybe not, might have to stand up, which I need to stand for the history one anyway. So for prepositions this week, um, we have before, so it's the back of your hand, so before, and then we're going to take that hand and swing it around behind us, behind, so you can kind of see one side of behind my head, before, behind, okay, then we have beneath, so our hands beneath, our other hand beneath, the right, below, sorry, below, and then down, beneath, and then kind of stand and push over for beside, so before, behind, below, beneath, beside. Okay? And again, I'm getting all of these hand motions from prepositions in paradise. So if you don't feel like watching through the video to, you know, to see me do them, you're welcome to uh, look them up on YouTube. They're great. They do them slowly. So it's really easy to follow along. Um, all right. So since I'm standing, I'm going to go ahead and do our history. So for history, it's the we had seven wonders of the ancient world. And then we have pyramids of Giza, hanging gardens of Babylon. Do your best robot impressions, what I was saying. Um, temple of Artemis. And then leaving this hand like this, then you just kind of make this, the shape of a Z uh, for the statue of Zeus. And then the mausoleum looks like this um, at Halicarnassus. And then you're gonna just take your arm and go around like a lighthouse light goes around for Ferris Lighthouse. And then you just kind of stand like Colossus stands for Colossus of Rhodes. If you have the older kids, um, you may add um, some ASL signs for where they're located. So if you wanted, sorry, that got really blurry for a minute. If you wanted to, you would have pyramids of Giza, so looks like this, kind of like your little bird tweeting. That's a G. So pyramids of Giza, and then hanging gardens of this is a B for Babylon, Temple of Artemis at E Ephesus, Statue of Zeus at Olympia, um, Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. This is an H. That's what it looks like, Halicarnassus. Um, Pharaoh's Lighthouse at Alexandria and Colossus of Fingers Crossed is R for Rhodes. So that's what we did for history. Uh, let's see, math, math, science, English, geography, timeline. That's all I have left. Uh, so for timeline, um, I will show you the official signs. And I'm struggling because I learned all different signs my first year and they're so stuck in my head. So I'm really having to work. On remembering these for those of you that have been doing this for a long time and been doing different signs I feel you so we have early Native Americans this is a feather and so we're touching your cheek and then behind your head with their feathers um, Israel so we're gonna make our eye looks like this so Israel and then we're going to divide two kingdoms Homer this is our H again 
and Hesiod. So our two H's. Rome founded, so you have a uh, flat, there was nothing, and then they made something, so Rome founded. And again, an R for Romulus and an R for Remus. And I think in the video with the lady in the black shirt, she kind of does this with it. That's just, I think, her style. <laughs> um, then we have Israel, so we've got Israel again. Looks like this, Israel, Falls, and then Assyria. Bows and arrows. If you look on the Israel Falls to Syria card, it has somebody with a bow and arrow on it. So you can point that out to the kids and tell them that's why we use that for Assyria. Then we have Assyria again. Falls to Babylon. Now, in on the video, they do this for Babylon. It's law. And they were the ones that had Ham the Code of Hammurabi. Um, and so they had the first, like, really big lot of laws. But... That is complicated for my kids to do, so I just do B for Babylon. And it's nice because this sign is not really hard to kind of change into this. I know, I don't know, it just feels like that, that works easier. So I do this for Babylon. If you're in my class, that's what I'm doing. But technically, it's this. Um, Lao Tzu, Confucius, and Buddha. So they were all philosophers, so we're going to make a P. This is sign language P. So it's kind of like you're throwing up a P sign, but your thumb is touching up here. Um, like your middle knuckle, so P, and we're going to put it up here by our head because our brains were always thinking. So we have Lao Tzu, Confucius, and because we have time in this part, um, we're going to kind of sit like Buddha, which, sorry, you can't see, I can maybe put it down just a little bit. So we're going to hold our hands down here. Buddha has a big belly. No comment on mine. Um, but you put your hands down under, kind of under your belly like Buddha sits. And then you kind of had to have your head done for Buddha. So that's what we do for that one. Um, ah, that's everything. It goes so much faster when I do these videos than it does in class. So um, for review today, we did um, Plato again. And um, I'm trying to find a good rhythm for the kids with review. Uh, the last time I taught the Abecedarian class, I jumped in. The, it was the second semester. So they were a little bit older. And they had been doing it for a while, so it's I've been really trying to figure out the best way to do it with this class because I have a really young class. Um, my son's the youngest, but he just turned four, and there are several other that just turned four over the summer, so they're a very young class. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to kind of do review that's not overtaxing to them. So if you guys have any good ideas... Um, for what you do for review that makes it go smoothly, then I'm all for that. Um, I will try to do a video for next week early, but I'm having surgery on Monday, so I will be out next week and the sub will be in. Hopefully I'll just be out for a week, um, Lord willing. But um, if, if I can't get one up, I will load one up later for those of you who are behind. Um, I am going to go ahead and plan everything for my sub, so I will have that. So I'll try to get it uploaded, though, prior to, so those of you who kind of watch are following along with me and are at the same, um, going the same pace we are, we can stay together. So anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome week. Um, hopefully you'll see me for week five, um, but if not, I'll definitely be back for week six. So, all right, guys, have an awesome week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.